Now, when it comes time for a business to decide that they no longer want to be in business, that's fine. They, they call that retirement or withdrawal from the business. So if the paddle company closes uh, voluntarily, let's talk about the voluntarily, um, there are certain steps that the company has to do. First of all, they have to furnish the Department of Insurance, the DOI, evidence that there's no longer any liability on any of the policies that they've made or that it's reinsured policy with a company that's still doing business and is solvent to do business, okay? Basically, what we're saying is they want to make sure that the company that when they quit, they don't want to have any potential liability. Now, they also have to surrender their uh, certificate of authority. Remember, I told you that when the officer applies and they authorize that they're going to follow uh, the rules of the Department of Insurance, the DOI, then gives them that permission to uh, operate. That's called a certificate of authority. When they want to retire, they obviously have to re-give back that certificate of authority. Um, if the department is satisfied that there's no outstanding obligations and they're happy with whoever they've chosen to reinsure any of their outstanding policies, then the department will cancel this certificate of authority so that it can't be reissued. And all of the deposits that have been put into uh, the fund get returned under the provisions of this chapter. So if the company wants to quit, you know, voluntarily right now, we're not going to talk about involuntarily like they're shut down by the state. If they voluntarily want to close their company and move on, retire, withdraw from business, uh, the big thing is they have to make sure all their accounts are protected or there's no liability. They have to surrender their certificate. And then the state literally has to approve their surrender. Okay. So just because they surrender the certificate of authority, the state has to do a, a quick audit to make sure that they are, in fact, not exposed to any liabilities while they're closed. Because that would leave, obviously, some uh, body's title insurance with no power behind it. Now, talk a little bit about violations. Any questions so far? Am I doing that good or you guys that good? Question? Uh, for those of you listening at home, my mic uh, out there is not working, so I'll try and repeat the question. Um, go ahead. Uh, the question was, can they involuntarily surrender? Well, yeah, we don't want to really get into that. Yeah, the company, the state could, if the Department of Insurance can close you down. And at that, that's a whole sec section. We're currently not talking about this is a voluntary. If the company voluntarily retires, say the owners will retire, and they want to do it amicably. Now, sure, if there's a bunch of violations or the state thinks they're working recklessly, they can actually come in and shut the company down. And in that case, there's some other hoops and steps to go through because then the state's going to want to make sure that all of their policies that they have outstanding actually have some protection, okay? Good question. Um, if there's any other, just let me know and we'll try and cover them, all right? Anybody who recklessly violates the chapter or fails to fulfill its requirement commits a Class B misdemeanor. Recklessly violates. Never heard of like a title writer, an underwriter rebel. <laughs> um, maybe they're the ones that wear the leather jacket. I don't know. Um, Provisions of the chapter do not apply to a company or a person in business the making abstracts of title to real estate and attaching their certificate engaging in business, nor any company association or person acting as an authorized agent for a duly qualified title insurance company. So this is mainly covering companies that write title insurance, not abstracts to title and an abstract is nothing more than a search of the public records an abstractor does not write an insurance policy they are the ones that basically think of it like create 
collecting the data, okay? Or it does also does not apply acting as, uh, say, like a mobile closer, this insurance, because they're not writing insurance either. They're just closing the deal. This is actually designed for someone. These uh, sections are designed for people who actually are the insurance writers of the company, okay? Now, there's a couple different things that we need to talk about specifically for the insurance company when they write title work. One of them is they actually have a limit on the risk that they can write, okay? One of the biggest limits is what they call the any one risk rule. Any one risk, right there on the uh, overhead. Any one risk implies that a title company or a company that's in approved by the state of Indiana to insurance title cannot expose itself, i.e. write a policy for greater than 50% of the capital or reserves they have on hand, okay? What I'm telling you is, it's any one risk. You do not want to, let's say you, uh, let me just see if I can give you an example. Say you got $100 in the bank and you go to Vegas and you want to make some bets. You cannot bet any more than 50% of your total on one roll of the dice. Because if something goes wrong and that roll of the dice loses, you would lose half your company in any one deal. All right? Question. The question was aggregate total. No, it's an aggregate total. So if I've got two or three hundred thousand in the bank as my reserve, I cannot write a three hundred thousand dollar. I can't have any one policy that exposes my company fifty percent of my reserves. All right. Um, now, anything that I reinsure, and what reinsurance is, is where I actually buy a policy to protect me. Okay, insurance companies do this all the time. They actually go to reinsurers, um, and they buy insurance to make sure that their insurance that they wrote doesn't wipe out all the reserve fund. If a title company has bought reinsurance, for a policy that is deducted from their aggregate, okay? So it really doesn't count because that's not their exposure. That is their, it's already reinsured with someone else, okay? So once again, any one risk is their main limitation. They cannot write a policy for more than 50% of their insurance reserves uh, and anything that's been reinsured does not count uh, in that aggregate total. All right, go to take a break. Come back just a second. If you want to get up, stretch your legs. We'll be right back. Your legs. We'll be right. Back.